Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. It's been a little bit since I made a video because I've been getting everything ready for our next big projects this winter. The name of the game this winter is going to be Productivity. I realize half the year is spent me not growing or producing anything other than our animals. And I want to change that and I want to bring you all along with me. So the name of the game is going to be Indoor Production as much as possible. So we have multiple projects that are going to follow that idea. The first one we're going to talk about is going to be the first video in a series on growing mushrooms indoors year round. So we're going to try to make it year round, but we'll definitely make it wintertime production. And we're going to talk about what kind of mushrooms we're going to grow, what requirements they need, and how we're going to provide that to them. So come along with me and let's go check it out. So the big thing you might have noticed already is this giant tent behind me. I want to go ahead and thank our sponsor for this video. It's going to be Vivo Sun. Vivo Sun sent me this tent, some other equipment for the perfect growing environment for what I need. And this is going to be great if you've got plants indoors or you like any kind of indoor growing production. This has so much space in it and this isn't even the biggest one. They have tents of all sizes, small all the way up to somewhat I would think the size of a bedroom. They're huge. So this is not even close to the biggest one. You have big enough that you can set up infrastructure inside like shelves, shelving, racks, things like that. Anything you need, they've got it. They've got the grow tents, they've got the accessories like fans, foggers, grow lights, anything you need for production. They're going to be able to get it for you. So go check them out at Vivo Sun for any of your indoor growing needs. So you may have seen in a previous set of videos that I made on this channel where I already grew oyster mushrooms in a different setup. I used five gallon buckets, which can still be used in this. We're going to try multiple methods, but it's going to be a much better setup than what I did. You kind of live and learn in videos, and from those videos, I had it about as low tech as you could possibly get it. It was not ideal. It worked, but it could be a lot better, and there's a lot of things I did in that video that I want to do better in this one and tell you all a little bit differently on how to be more productive. So let's get into the requirements and how this grow setup is going to fulfill those. So number one factor that you need to consider when growing your mushrooms, humidity. Without the right humidity, they're not going to fruit, they're not going to produce mushrooms. The big ideal setup with this is this tent is going to let us get the humidity we need for those mushrooms without getting the whole room or the whole shop in this case humid. Oyster mushrooms need anywhere from like 85 to 90 plus humidity on the percentage level. And if you get your whole room that way, you're going to end up with mold issues, mildew issues, you're going to get a lot of things ruined and stuff in the room. So it's really good if you can get some kind of enclosed setup separate from the room that you're in. I ran into that problem when I was fruiting mushrooms in my last setup, got the carpet soaked. It was not an ideal situation. So in here, we can maintain humidity inside this tent without having to humidify the whole room. Let me show you how I'm going to get humidity to this tent. So the way we have humidity here is we have a fogger. They use these for reptiles, carnivorous plants, bog plants of different kinds. And this system is going to provide quite a, bit, quite a bit of humidity to the system. So let me show you how it works. You fill up the base here. You can flip on the switch on the back. We can crank up the humidity so you can see how this works. So that's it turned on, guys. It's really quiet. doesn't make a lick of noise. I love this thing. So let me take you inside the tent to show you what it's going to look like in there. So the way it works, guys, is there's a hose that goes to the top of the fogger like you saw, and it comes up here through one of the many vents this tent has, which is really nice to have. You can put in your vents, you can put in fans, and I'll talk about those in a little bit, lights, you name it. There's lots of access inside of this. But you can see here that it goes up the pipe and this fogger is putting fog or mist inside of this. The reason why you want to use one of these foggers, one, 
It has a tube that will let you reach anywhere you need to go. And two, this is making such a fine fog that it's not going to get water droplets all over everything. It's going to maintain the humidity without getting water everywhere, like a humidifier would or like a mister or anything like that. This gives you a very fine fog. As you can see, it's very light, very wispy, got a very small water droplet, and it's going to work perfect for this, I would see. Number two requirement for mushrooms is airflow. You've got to maintain proper airflow so that they're able to breathe. Most people try to lump in fungi, like mushrooms, into the plant category. They remind us more of plants than they do of animals. But realistically, mushrooms work a lot like animals more than they do like plants. They breathe in oxygen and they exhale CO2 as a byproduct, just like we do. And that is something that can be a problem because one, you're trying to maintain the humidity inside a closed environment. But when you close off the environment, there's not good air exchange. So to do that, we're going to use a couple of fans that VivoSun sent over to maintain the intake of air and to remove the CO2. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So up here at the top, you can see it because I have the fogger still on. But there is a four inch fan up here. It's got 2,500 RPMs. That's pulling air into the tent. So fresh air from the outside comes to the tent. And down here at the bottom, there is another fan that's taking air from in the tent outside from the shop itself to the outside. So the big thing is the reason why you want your outtake fan to be as low as possible is because of CO2. CO2 is 1.5 times heavier than air, the air around us. And so it's going to settle to the bottom of this and build up from the bottom. So if you put your outtake fan as low as possible, it's going to remove all that excess CO2 that's settling at the bottom. And that's going to help the mushrooms to get fresh air in and the CO2 out so they do not suffocate. What happens, guys, is if you don't maintain good airflow, you'll get these stunted mushrooms because they're not getting enough oxygen to breathe, they're not fruiting properly, and they get stunted. That was my problem with my first and second flush from my last video. They grew fairly well, but on the second flush, they just got stunted. There was not enough airflow going to maintain their size. So we're gonna to try to fix that this time by having a fan up top to bring fresh air in and a fan at the bottom to bring the air out or the CO2 out into the outside. And the big important thing that I have to stress to you is your outtake fan has to go to the outside, not into the room. The reason why is you don't want to build up CO2 in your room, but the more important reason is spores. So mushrooms reproduce through spores, and oyster mushrooms are notorious for the amount of spores they produce. It's a ridiculous amount. And spores are very, very bad for you to be breathing in. They're very bad for your health to be breathing. So you don't want to be blowing spores out into your room or into your shop or anywhere where you're breathing the air. You want to send those outside and you want to make sure to get them out of the room altogether. So wherever you set up your setup, make sure it has access to the outside either through a window. In this case, it's going under my shop door through a smaller pipe. And so that will be going to the outside and where I don't have to worry about spores in the shop here. The next thing you're going to need is actually the light itself that I have turned on here. This is just an LED grow light, so I'm not having to worry as much about it getting the humidity on it or anything like that. We don't want to just like get it wet, but we're not worried about cracking bulbs or anything like that. This is all plastic. There's no glass or anything on this, and it doesn't get hot. This is going to help give us a little bit of light to our mushrooms. The best rule of thumb, guys, is Mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms, need just enough light to be able to read a book by. They have to have just low light conditions to be able to maintain the amount of growth that they need. They are not a mushroom that grows in the dark caves like you see like button mushrooms and stuff like that. We're going to give just a little bit of light and I'm probably going to turn this down just a little bit. We'll see. I can turn it up or turn it down. That's one thing I like about this. But it is also a very inexpensive grow light that I got from 
Amazon, I believe, not sponsored by Amazon, but had this for other setups. But it's just a two foot grow light that I got for very cheap. And this is gonna give us enough light in here for these mushrooms to be able to grow by. So let's talk a little bit about extra equipment you're gonna need other than the fogger, the fans, and the light. One thing I want to do is I don't want to run the fans 24-7. It doesn't need to be run 24-7 and that's going to waste electricity. Again, I'm trying to do this in a way that uses the least amount of electricity and cost as possible. What I'm going to do to do that, or what I'm going to get to do that, is I have a timer here. So this is a timer that once you plug it in, you can set it to run whenever you want. So. What I'm going to do is it's got a plug on either end. I'm going to plug both of the fans here and I want them to run. I'm going to start out with probably 10, 15 minutes every hour, or every two hours to try to take that CO2 out, get some fresh air in and it will maintain that air quality without having to run all the time. So having something like this will be pretty handy in trying to reduce your amount of electricity that you're using. So another thing I have here is in this little pocket that's handy inside of the grow tent, I have a humidity and thermometer, a humidity probe and also measures temperature. The, I like to maintain certain kind of numbers. I want to be able to see what's going on in there without opening up the zippers to allow the humidity out. That little probe goes to a little monitor that's going to tell me what the temperature is, what the humidity is, it'll tell me percent humidity. And that's really going to be helpful in being able to monitor what's going on in there without having to open and close it all the time. The least amount of times you have to open it, the better because you don't want to release all that humidity inside. So anything you can get to monitor without opening the zipper is going to be helpful to you. So the only other thing I don't have here is I'm going to get the humidity probe that is going to plug into the fogger back here, that way whenever it gets below a certain level of humidity, that will kick on the fogger, it'll just start running, and then it'll turn it back off once it reaches that humidity level. So I'll show you all that when it comes in. So I gotta tell you at the same time, guys, before I wrap up, how easy this setup was to maintain, or how easy it was to get put together. The tent itself, Morgan and I put up in like 30 minutes, because all the poles click together, there's no screws, there's no bolts, and then you slip the tent cover over it and zip it up. That's all there is to it. So happy with how easy it was to get this set up. I think it's really going to work well. And I'm so excited to show you how we're going to get our mushrooms growing and set up. That will be in the next video. We'll talk about what kind of mushrooms I got. We're going to talk about how we're going to get them started, what kind of substrates to use, and then how to get them to the fruiting stage. And that'll be a whole video in itself. So until next time, guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you have any more questions for me on any of the equipment I'm using, the setup that we have, anything like that, leave it down in the comments. And what you're going to be looking forward to learning in the mushroom propagation video, how we're going to get them all growing and stuff like that. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to go check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our other channel for our other farm projects at King Cross Farms here on YouTube. We also have an Instagram and a Facebook for that. And then hit that bell icon if you want to be up to date on those notifications. And until next time, guys, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.